Randall, it's an incredible opportunity to be with you this morning, and thanks for giving me the chance to preview your new film, Secretariat, too. Thanks, Tony. Another great story, and that's where I want to begin the conversation today. Uh, I'm curious to know, because you have opportunities to share lots of stories in your profession, what are the stories that grab you and, and kind of draw you in and make you want to be a part of sharing? Well, I've often been asked why I make war stories, and I've always had to answer that question by saying I, I don't make war stories, I, I make love stories, and I mm -hmm. want to know what you love enough to, to sacrifice your life for. Uh, but with this, there was no killing and dying. It, the, the stakes were, were in some ways uh, f further reaching. You know, they were about this, the spirit of a, of a woman and of an animal and how that, that got into a, a question of what winning is and what losing is. Um, the, I had never been really interested in horse racing. I, I haven't grown up a Baptist in the South. I, I thought of horse racing as, as a vaguely, if not specifically evil, you know, <laughs> gambling and, you know, and bad things. Uh, but Are the, you saying you're not a poker player then? I am not a poker. I'm a <laughs> terrible poker player. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I've, and I've done it enough to find out that I am a terrible <laughs> poker player. Uh, but, but this story um, came to me from, uh, you know, uh, Mike Rich had written this original screenplay and meticulously researched the facts. And I thought, I'm not really interested in a story about a racehorse mm -hmm. and the, the woman who owned him. But then I read the the script and I thought well this is this this story has dimensions of the crisis of faith of asking yourself you know what will I do what will it cost me and and the fact that you move into the future when the future is unknowable mm. um, I heard Tony Blair speak at the uh, National Prayer Breakfast about a year ago and and that struck me that he put it in exactly those words a leader steps forth when the future is not just unknown but unknowable and that's what this woman did and I thought that was a story that I didn't fully understand when I started I thought looking into this exploring this will require me to examine what I believe about faith it'll let me go on the journey with the audience and I don't know where it'll end up Mm -hmm. But I think it'll be worth it to, to go there. I'm, I'm, I'm willing and eager to take that trip. Yeah. So you're best known for uh, telling the story of Braveheart uh, with Secretariat. It's uh, kind of a unique challenge, I would guess, in that many people probably assume they know the story of Secretariat. So how, how is it for you to try to express kind of maybe the, the story behind the story? It's exciting to me to express the story behind the story of Secretariat because people know the surface and the and the depth of the of the story really is something most of them don't know they may have heard of penny chinnery but but only a, a tiny minority know that without that woman the the racehorse would not have been i i truly believe there was something about her not just in the way she fought to keep the horse, that she fought to save her family's farm, that she invented methods of financing nobody had ever thought of before. Um, but it was also that she had gone on this trip of, of aspiration, of following her heart. When her heart was divided and she loved her family, she she had responsibilities as a mother and she had this opportunity that inspired her that she was eager to get at um, it's like the call came to her and she wasn't really asking for it but there it was and she stepped up and said I will do this and that that gives me goosebumps it's like when I started Braveheart uh, I didn't know what William Wallace had said on the battlefield when his men were outnumbered three or four to one. No mm -hmm. one knew. But he, I knew he had said something that inspired them to stay. Mm -hmm. And I got to write 
what I would have needed to hear if I were on that battlefield. And that was what was so great for me about Secretariat, to get to say, what did she really feel when she was alone? Mm -hmm. the, the woman, Penny Chinnery, who, who owns Secretariat, is still alive, and I got the incredible privilege of, of getting to know her and interview her. And she told me something remarkable, Tony. She said, I didn't know how lonely I had been until I saw your movie. Hmm. And that stunned me. Mm -hmm. It was that she had blocked out so much of the pain. Uh, she had uh, the, the, the feeling of the, the jealousy around her or the discomfort that, that the men who were owners felt with this woman who had come into their world and didn't back up a step. You know, she did not move backwards. Mm -hmm. And she knew what she had to do and was willing to pay the price to do it. Um, that just stirred me up. And I think if it doesn't stir me, how is it gonna, how is it gonna stir an audience? Mm -hmm. You have uh, the incredible opportunity to work with some very creative people. And uh, we have that in the church as well. A lot, lot of creative people. Uh, help me understand how you try to draw out that s those special gifts that they have that allow artists to be all that God designed them to be. It seems like a unique leadership challenge that you have. I, it is. And I, I have a couple of principles that, that I follow as, as principles. Um, one is that I try to identify and acknowledge the best in people. If I criticize, it is in a whisper and it's in private. And when I praise, it's as loudly as I can do it and as publicly as I can do it. And I think that is, that is crucial in a leadership role. I also think that it's important that everybody have a job to do. Hmm. Um, I was thinking, I was in, in church yesterday and, and I was walking around thinking, no one has said good morning to me and has shaken my hand. And I thought, you know what I need to do is I need to be the person that goes around and shakes the hand of everyone I can see and looks them in the eye mm -hmm. and says, it's good to see you. I, I, I need to do that thing. And I thought, well, there's the individual aspect of leadership, what we require of ourselves. And then there's that, that translation to other people to say, well, they're feeling what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. So how can, I, how can I help them have a task so that they're not just, uh, they're not just passengers, but they're actually rowing? because they'll feel better to be rowing. It's one of the things that I wanted in Secretariat that I didn't want people to be spectators in the movie. I wanted them to be participants in the horse racing. Every horse racing movie I ever saw had um, the, you know, these big sort of flowing slow motion shots of how horse, we've got a couple of slow motion shots mm -hmm. in this, some of that are kind of eye popping. And when you see the muscles and what a horse does, but I wanted you to feel the dirt in your face and the speed and the danger and, and cast actual jockeys to ride these horses and the cameras are, are inside the race. Well, I think life should be that way. I think when people come to a church, they, they need to feel like they are engaged and participate. At least I want to when I'm there. All right. Well, thank you again for giving me the opportunity to connect with you today. And again, thanks for another great story. It's, it's much more than a horse race. There was a powerful story behind this movie, Secretariat. So thank you very much.